The following program is based on a true, never-before-told story. Individuals, locations, and events described are not fabricated in any such way and are 100% historically accurate. Viewer discretion is advised. A small Italian villa. A quaint, peaceful summer's evening. Families going to and from restaurants. Young adults taking part in the nightlife. A rigatoni mozzarella of the esteemed mozzarella family <laughs> caught red-headed stabbing the patriarch of the Gouda family, Giuseppe Gouda, to death in the wee hours of July 1974. While under heavy interrogation, rigatoni remained silent, unflinching, saying he would only speak with his lawyer. However, DNA evidence quickly linked rigatoni to over 10 other assassinations he took part in for his patriarch. But that wasn't the only arrest made that night. Rigatoni Mozzarella's younger brother, Tony Mozzarella, was also caught white-handed, jerking off into his family's Alfredo sauce supply using a single, soft rigatoni noodle. His mom walked in on him after she heard a loud moan coming from the kitchen to find her son, trousers down, writhing in pleasure over the boiling pot. After his mom knocked him out with a stale baguette and called the police, he immediately confessed to his gross indecency and admitted to having flavored the mozzarella special sauce for the past 20 years. In one night, the status of the mozzarella family, former pillars of the local community, had crumbled. Both brothers were sentenced to the state penitentiary to pay for their crimes. Rigatoni for life, Tony for like a month. Well, that's where their story should have ended. In fact, was only the beginning. What you're about to see is a story that is not for the faint of heart. It is a story of family, betrayal, and utmost tragedy. In order to understand Mozzarella's story, one has to start with their first days in the penitentiary. A task made easier due to Penny State Penitentiary being under heavy surveillance from third-party journalistic entities examining what was an ongoing success in stamping down jail violence, escape attempts, and improving inmate opportunities. These early interviews quickly show the differences between the two brothers. What'd you do to get here, Brigatoni? I dumped the body in the river. <laughs> room you worked with, with an elite Italian mafia is it's true. No comment. Bow of silence. Public indecency. Tony was caught jerking off with a rigatoni noodle his mama's pasta shop. His mama found him jerking off with a rigatoni. She beat him over the head with a baguette. That still has bread hit me so hard it concussed to me. They, she called the ambulance and the cops at the same time. They found that I've been jerking off with a rigatoni for the past 20 years and the food compromised. <laughs> From the very beginning, the brother's stay at Penny State was fraught with trouble. On the very first day, two violent incidents transpired, where he tracked down Staff Sergeant Officer Jenkins, who had since retired to a small Italian countryside house, to help us recall these events. Could you please state your name? Uh, Correctional Officer Jenkins. Worked at Penny State Penitentiary for 20 years. Recently retired. Tell us about the lunchroom incident. <sighs> that was a mess. Tony was usually a mild-mannered guy. I mean, he said hello to all the guards, but... He wanted to sit next to his brother. <laughs> and Alfred <laughs> sit there. And Avery... Avery had an attitude. He wouldn't move, and that just set Tony off. Tony, please! <laughs> Rick and Tony ended up taking the fall for that one. But we all know Tony. Go, Tony. This one is on me. And a couple days later, there was the shower incident. Tell us about that. Don't you gag into the damn stall as me! Yeah, so there was this scuffle in the showers, and you know, we feel the worst. But when we got there, it was just Tony and Rigatoni scuffling in a stall. Uh, apparently, Tony tried to join him in the shower. I guess it was harmless, but it was just super fucking weird. Let's join you. <laughs> They're literally going to take. 
Felt bad about that one. Beat Tony so hard he was speaking in tongues. He said the other said that The shower incident had landed both men in the nurse's office. It was at this moment, vague rumblings of Rigatoni being unsatisfied with his stay were first heard. But he really liked Rigatoni. <laughs> we need to make allies, get a game for beating people up. I said not to punch each other in the ass in the shower. <laughs> Additionally, inmates were encouraged to keep a journal as a means to teach introspection and further one's emotional depth. This has given us unprecedented access to the mozzarella brothers' thoughts, emotions, and desires. Another day, another time. I wondered when I would get out and see my five-year-old girl. I spent too long working as a hitman for the mob. Now, I just wanted to see my family. I lay in bed at night, thinking of a way out, and wondering why my brother felt the need to jerk off into the pasta sauce every night. <laughs> That's good. Tony so not so little drunk of one thing. The smooth, sad feel of the greeny mood around his genitals. <laughs> In the early days, both brothers were fixated on specific goals. While his brother wrote about freedom, Tony spent his time trying to finesse his way into the jailhouse kitchen. What was unclear was whether it was out of a love for the culinary arts or another doughy desire. But he's so angry. <laughs> hey, got the job open in the kitchen yet? Fuck off, Tony. <laughs> On-site therapist Dr. Carbonara had many theories as to why Tony Mozzarella made a fresh spin on the Mozzarella family's Alfredo sauce recipe. I theorized childhood trauma was the root for his fixation. Freudian theory was my go-to on this. Interviews with Tony were enlightening to say least. What is it about the Alfredo, Tony, that made you want to stroke it so badly? I tried to jerk off into the marinara, the meat sauce, but uh, too noticeable. <laughs> Because people complain, they said there was some gunk in the food, and uh, Tony doesn't like it when they complain about the gunk in the food. Sure, Tony chuck off in the pasta, but he's taking pride in the pasta sauce. The answer was more simple. Tony's just fucking weird. While Penny State Penitentiary was known for running a tight ship, towards the middle of July, the entire prison had been called into lockdown, and Tony Mozzarella got his first taste of zero tolerance policing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just No, I'm not a suspect. I'm sleeping. No, I'm just sleeping. Tony, Tony, just So, Tony, uh, I hear there's been an incident with the police that you received excessive punishment. From the security office. Don't mozzarella wasn't doing nothing. <coughs> the lockdown happened. He was on the second floor. I swear. I was making my way to the cell. But Tony got a bad eye. Sometimes he get confused. He talked in the third person. He talked with the flow. And uh, he went to the wrong cell. And ended up sleeping in the Mesker's bed. The Mesker thought he was gay. Tony isn't gay. Nothing wrong with being gay. But Tony ain't gay. And now I'm in the doghouse. I was in my bed with nothing. Coma and they say we got nine and Tony. They have more than nine, Tony. They had their batons on Tony. Tony Mozzarella was known for being benign. There were allegations of inmate violence, but nothing could be proven. But one thing is certain, Tony changed after that day. The brutality he faced from the officers, the hours he spent in solitary, he didn't come out the same man. His motivation to escape his sentence was born. Tony, I'm here to get you out. Like a Tony. Prisons. They're no joke. We have to get out. You know what they do to men who jerk off and tell of sauce around here. Yes. It was once the regular Tony. It's now the Tony. While the brothers' goals were now aligned, that did nothing to erase the friction between the two. In fact, just hours later in the cafeteria, these tensions flared up, resulting in a tense exchange between both brothers. That's what they got! 
It's like you take every opportunity you have to remind people that you ducked off into your family's pasta sauce. Not a shame to that done. <laughs> I don't know the regrets. <laughs> That's the problem, Tony. You should have regrets. You wouldn't even have a sentence if you just said you were sorry. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. <laughs> All you have to do is say I'm sorry for jerking off. I've dude. never apologized for taking this horrible mother. <laughs> we'll turn to Sunday for chasing his desires. <laughs> No, those brothers, they were constantly on edge. Just seconds away from going off. It broke my heart to see. You know, family, it's always important. It's, it's the small things that tear them apart. I didn't know what did to those two. Uh, it could have been the incalculable amount of assassinations Rick Tony had carried out. Or perhaps it's just the mere fact that Tony was a noodle-stroking creep degenerate. To be honest, it was probably Tony's fault. On many occasions, the brothers were overheard planning their escape in the halls of the penitentiary. Reports seemed to indicate that Rigatoni Mozzarella was the brains behind the operation, and Tony was simply the errand boy. Hey, you need a little something, Tony can get it. Can Tony get a brain so we can learn how to craft and get out of here? There's a few things Tony cannot get. <laughs> Given the brazen nature of these conversations, rumblings of their escape plans made their way around the penitentiary. On-site journalist Rossi Russo had attempted to dig into these whisperings, but got nothing out of the unassuming Tony Mozzarella. So Tony, you said you truly had no idea what your brother Rico Tony was doing this entire time. Well, Tony, nothing. Tony got the smell of brain, yeah. Tony a nice guy, you just help people out and you get on his way, he don't have too many. One thing that is true about being incarcerated is that it gives one time to think, to consider what is important to them. It allows an individual to set new goals and figure out a way to achieve them. I'm reading books to enhance my knowledge, Tony. And with knowledge, we will ascend. Get out of this hell. I'm going to pump out of the gym so when I get out, I can beat the mother <laughs> of the head for what she did. <laughs> I keep telling myself it's not my fault if mother dies when I get out. But I know. Anything to see my little girl. Lasagna. Tony Mozzarella was not just an errant boy for Rigatoni. He was known to have done favors for other inmates, which quickly earned him a reputation inside the prison ecosystem. Whatever you wanted, Tony could get. Famous blues artist and world-renowned cocaine addict Billy Bulasconi recalls how Tony Mozzarella was able to sneak in high-quality musical instruments that had no history in the prison system. You know, when I first heard Tony could get you things, right, I asked him for a pair of bongos. Like, I thought it asked for cocaine, because obviously. But I really wanted to smack around a pair of bongo cheeks. Problem, hey. You need some bongos, don't we'll get you some bongos, Billy. And sure enough, he got me a pair of bongos. And then I was like, man, I'd really like a harmonica. So I didn't waste a second. I was like, Tony, give me a harmonica. Oh, uh, you want a... You want uh, another instrument? Hey, Tony just got you some bongos. Hey, you know what? You're on harmonica, Tony get you a harmonica. I like, uh, it's stupid, uh, but whatever. <laughs> Ain't that good with so many instruments. I <laughs> only did it look confused. And you know what? It was only a few hours later, and Tony returns with a fresh harmonica in his hands. I was blown away. And then I thought, man, I wish I had a double bass. You what? Billy, you want a, a third instrument? <laughs> you want a double bass? He wants more. <laughs> okay, I, I can get you a Tony can get you a double. He ain't, no, he's not saying no, but let's come down. He's not saying no. He's just, I got you a bongo. I got you a harmonica. You want a double bait? Okay, I mean, you do you, I guess. To be honest, I was just testing the system at this point. I was like, there's no way Tony Mozzarella is going to be able to smuggle me a double bass. It's huge. Just no way. He's like, no, hey. Tony, where'd you get that double bass? Hey, no problem, all right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm all right. Don't worry about the guy with the double bass. Worry about the guy with the pockets, but I'm not the guy with the double bass. But then hours later, I mean, I think it was quicker than the harmonica. Tony just walks in with a gorgeous double bass in hand, and man, 
I still don't know how he did it. So now I thought I'd finally ask Tony for the cocaine. And Tony said yes. When I got back to my cell that night, on my bed, there was a little pack. But there was no cocaine. No. It was just a little note from Tony. You know what I said? I said you're better than this. Well, Billiard died from a cocaine overdose shortly after our interview. It had seemed Tony had stopped touching himself and started touching others. While Tony Mozzarella struck the good favor of the jail populace, Rigatoni operated in the shadows. He stalked the halls, eyed the guards, scoped the escape routes, and came up with an effective plan. Rigatoni's journal, while deeply personal in nature, also clearly laid out how he intended to escape. We formulate the plan. The red doors. That is the way out. We need a guard with purple keys. As simple as that. The purple key mold will allow us to simply walk out the front door. When it comes to prison escape attempts, democracy can only get one so far. While Tony was playing nice and doing favors, Rigatoni's plan of rocking out the front door could not be done simply. An anonymous inmate recalls something Rigatoni had said during roll call half a month into their sentence. Today, Tony, we are not playing by the rules. Today, we are headhunting. And sure enough, violence broke out. Penny State Penitentiary had a record-breaking week in a bad way. Known for stamping down on inmate violence, Penny State was thought to have changed the game and revolutionized inmate care. Yet today, it has suffered from a record number of officer beatdowns, leaving many correctional officers hospitalized, bruised, and quite upset. Staff Sergeant Jenkins was admitted to the hospital with light bruising, but could not name who committed the violent act. Leads are iced in, and tensions are high. Rossi Russo. Yep, that's right. Never saw their faces. They clocked me over the head pretty good. Uh, at least two, maybe three men at the time. I wasn't sure. It was definitely the Mozzarella Brothers. I know that now. But at the time, at the time I wasn't so sure. Go get your cop, buddy. I'll see you in the cell. Or you could just go to your fucking cell and wait off the heat. Hey, Rigatoni, I'm yeah. glad you go to my cell and wait off the heat. Is this a smart idea? Another inmate came forward after the violence and claimed they saw Tony beat an officer with a crowbar. It seemed out of character for Tony. Tony, you, you're usually such a model inmate. Why have you been acting up so late? Tony. Tony didn't mean nothing but it. Tony just didn't get any sleep last night, but you were agitated and had a crow about it. So I didn't know where it came from, it's just a bear. <laughs> Tony would never talk. <laughs> Correctional officer Alessandro Amatucci believed Tony to have been joking more than serious, and thus the allegation fell through. In hindsight, we should have been more worried about the Mozzarella Brothers. Uh, Rigatoni especially. I'm going to have a little fun. And by fun, I mean I'm going to take this sock and beat the cop up. I mean, we always thought he was just joking. Like, you want to walk around that nail fire there, Rigatoni? I'm going to stab someone, huh? With his history, that one's really obvious. The escape attempt also had a healing effect. While the brothers had drifted apart from each other in the last couple of years, taking different paths in lives, working towards a common goal seemed to bring back a mutual respect that had been lost. Tony usually disregards what his brother says, does whatever he wants instead. <laughs> but today, Tony had a goal. Make his brother proud. Despite publicly talking about their escape plans for months, Rigatoni made attempts to blend in and ease security concerns. Tony, we need to go exercise to avoid raising suspicion. Play the role of a model inmate for a little while. An inmate who doesn't jack off to our radar. You just keep a pretty little time. <laughs> but what do you want me to do, Rigatoni? Tony? Have sex with women? <laughs> On August 25th, 1984, the sun rose above the hills like every other day. There was a sweltering heat cascading over the penitentiary. The birds were chirping, and roll call was minutes from taking place. By all means, a standard day. But everything was about to change. 
unbeknownst to the rest of the prison population, the Mozzarella Brothers were going to attempt the impossible that very night. I have to, I have to work out, to, Tony. Work out to my intellect. I have to work out to my arms. <laughs> my mom was there, bring it, Tony. Mom self what, Tony? You get that to jail. <laughs> good, and you just pay for new can, I got Tony. You call up mom, I do tell her one day. Don't say that. No, they think I told you. Tell her you love. Next second. Bursting down the door, Tony, <laughs> smacking that old bitch's face open. <laughs> Tony! The last thing she ever said was, Tony! <laughs> Tony came and he arrayed the sauce and chucked off his wee with the rigatone and noodle. She said it to the cops. <laughs> Tony is a little extreme. It is not extreme. It's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> the truth of the matter was, Tony Mozzarella was only supposed to spend a week max in the penitentiary. However, because he had repeatedly spoke about murdering his mother upon release, he had his probation revoked and incurred numerous sentence extensions. Officer Alessandro filed a report on one such occasion. You know, you won't be out here in like maybe two or three days, Tony, if you just good behavior. What you gonna do we got? I'm going to kill my mother. Okay, well, you know, Tony, I wish you didn't say that to me, but... <laughs> You're gonna have to dock you for like at least a year now. Yeah, I'm just a joke. Not a joke. I'm gonna smack <laughs> that old granny's ass open. Do you know what the crowbar can do to an 80 year old woman's head? Tony. Dude, you gotta stop talking, man. I've been practicing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Tony, don't say anymore. <laughs> don't say anything more. I got the crowbar in the cell. <laughs> Tony. Like I'm so Tony, I paid them off so we could talk. Here's the plan. It's quite complicated. What we're going to do, Tony, tonight, I'm going to unlock your door. Then I'm going to unlock my door. Then I'm going to unlock the main door. Tony get lost. Uh, you won't <laughs> unlock who's the first? Look here. My cell. I carry the keys. I unlock my cell door. Go down here, Tony. We unlock you. Take it down here. Go left. To straight shoot at the front door. It's only the eyes will get shot to it. I don't know how fast can you run. Don't. If anything happens tonight, you run. You don't look back. Don't. You just keep running. Easy. You're my brother. Don't. And even though you jack off into buster, I still love you. If it's only. Would you still love your brother when he kills our mom? <laughs> <laughs> Should have known something was up. It was lights out, and I was checking out Rick Tony's room for contraband like I did every night. There's this weird exchange between the two. I'll see you tomorrow night, brother. I'll Go to your own bed. Hey, brother. I love you. Good night. Good night. Fuck. You're so fucking. Brother. Stay <laughs> back. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pretty sure they thought they were going to die. As the clock struck one, and all the other inmates had fallen asleep, Rigatoni Mozzarella stood up out of his bed, dug into the back of his drawer where he had hidden three keys. From the moment he took a step out of his cell, he knew there was no turning back. Come on, let's go. I can't believe it worked, Rigatoni. We're not dealt yet, Tony. Stop, Tony. Stay close, Tony. We can't be reckless now. Deep breaths, Tony. We're almost out. Rigatoni. We can't go any further. We walked like five feet, Tony. I know. Stumbled at the first time out there. You pathetic, Tony. Don't judge me. You were always the athletic one. Just go, Rigaton. Don't. If you don't follow me now, you'll never see me again. Or we disappear. Go. Go, Rigaton. Go. 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 Go.
successfully escaped the pack of dogs and there was a nationwide alert out for him. Tony Mozzarella ran back home to fulfill his goal of killing his mother, but when he got there to the restaurant, it had been shut down for numerous ejaculate-based health code violations and his mother, gone. Tony Mozzarella checked himself into a rehab program and got a job working in a butchery. He found a wife, a woman named Francesca Pettuccini, they married three years later and together had two children, Orza and Zidi Mozzarella. They had a happy life, a normal life. Francesca accepted Tony for what he had done and adored how he had changed. That was until 1983 when Tony relapsed and was caught stroking himself with a rigatoni noodle while hosting a dinner party. His wife left shortly after and Tony passed away from an intensely complicated UTI months later. Rigatoni Mozzarella, the infamous assassin, was never heard from again. His wife, Alfredo, and daughter, Lasagna, inexplicably moved overseas to New York City, United States, where they had lived ever since. She remarried a man named Paul Smith, a distinctly American man who spoke with a heavy accent. He was known for being quiet, a man who kept to himself, and a diligent and loyal factory hand. To this day, many still theorize on the complexities of the brother's story. What caused Tony's fixation? What happened to Rigatoni? Where did Joe Mozzarella disappear to? In life, we rarely get the answers we desire. And in the case of the Mozzarella brothers, I suppose we will never know. <laughs>